So watch me work is basically a free writing class or a free creativity class, if you will, that takes place um, kind of very much in the library of South Korea, which is where you can watch it. For those of you who are on the internet, you can watch it. So what we do is watch me work with the needs you have for the first time.
Okay, that's uh oh I forgot to tell you. Oh what's your name by the way? June. June? Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, so I'm doing this uh, little game. Okay. Uh, so far I'm the only one playing. But um yeah. <laughs> I have, uh,
So I forgot to tell you, Jane, that this is also a play. Hence, the velvets. Every play has a velvets in it, somewhere in it. So if you can just imagine that it's also a velvets. This is a play, so what we did just then is we did the action together. And I'm not still, he's doing such a good job. Um, we did the action together. And now we're going to do the dialogue. Okay. I think people at Harvard call it better than the actor call it. But we're not at Harvard, I mean, but I just thought I'd do that so you think I went to lose you somewhere once. So, I know, I'll have to say your name for it like you, there it goes, like that. It was sound like a robot is saying that. It's three different But you said three different, yeah, three different, like, songs. You know, so, um, closer because I can't hear No, it's okay. Oh, I, this is so live and it's weird because you can't hear it. Yeah, it's like so, so does anybody have a question about their work, their creative drama? No? Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, it, it's, it's echoing. Yeah, yeah. Well. It's weird. It is weird. It's so loud. It's going out yeah, too loud. Can you try it without the mic? Try the mic. Yeah, this is weird. This is weird. Yeah, this is like yeah. Andrew is some reason. Oh, because that. those uh, speakers are on. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, you but sound well, better than I know. This that was so weird. Yeah. Usually those speakers are on. Yeah. Anyway, but we won't worry about. It. We're having enough text uh, today. <laughs> um. So yeah, what's your name? Remind me. I'm Brett. Brett. This is my first time here. Okay. Oh, good. Because I was like. I don't, I've never seen you. <laughs> no. So, no, 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 here we go. Okay. Okay, so, okay Brett. Um, oh, the football player. Sorry. Okay. Brett no, in your, in my mind. Yeah, I'm package then because of him, so that makes sense. Yes. I, he has a big impact on my life, so that's good. Yes. That'll work. Connected. Do you have How a song he about him? He's not doing well. Yeah, okay, but you are. I'm doing great. Great. Okay. He's a bad guy. Is he really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He cheated on his wife while she had breast cancer and like sent pictures of his penis to Team Masseuse. It was bad. It was really bad. And, and the pictures of his penis weren't even good. That's what I'm, I get. Probably not. Probably not. I would imagine. Probably. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Okay, but you're the, you're the good friend. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, and he's um, the bad guy. Okay. Exactly. Okay, uh, um, so I am an actor and a playwright, and uh, primarily, and I, I wonder, when you write, characters who are not necessarily dissimilar from your own experience, but maybe from a different walk of life, how do you, is there anything you do in particular to safeguard yourself from feeling ridiculous or offensive or both? Right. Huh. So, so Brett, I mean, I'm going to repeat your question, yeah. so just to make sure that I kind of might be answering something that might have something to do with it. I have something to do with uh, what you're talking about. So, so Brett says, when one writes something that uh, a character that isn't like really close to you, right? Someone who's really different from you. How do we safeguard ourselves from being offensive or ridiculous. or ridiculous or ridiculously offensive? Um, um, I, I would suggest. Just write it as best you can. You know, I mean, I think I, because I think what happens is we worry about it, and then that just makes it worse. Sort of, you know. Um, there is a, a school of thought that says that oh, anybody can write anybody. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know that in Hollywood, a lot of people get hired to write people. And that's okay. And a lot of people, and sometimes they're successful. And a lot of people generate stories that, you know, are far from them. You could say, and and sometimes they're successful. And a lot of people get tired to write people that they, and they just uh, end up continuing the same old shit, as we say on the corner. You know. So, I don't know. It's good to be mindful, but up to a point. And if you really feel like you got to write this person then go for it, and when you're in rehearsal or whatever, you can count on the feedback to make sure you stay on the road. That's my best, you know? You know, um, so, but don't worry about it too much. Don't let it stop you from writing it. Go ahead and write it. Um, 
But just just know that when you step, yeah, when you step. I mean, the question to me, I always ask, how much skin do you have in the game? And not just foreskin, but you know, <laughs> this skin too. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, really, uh, how much skin you got in the game? And um, that's a question. So just be mindful. Yeah. I feel like also it's easy to forget that you have rehearsal for things sometimes. That you have rehearsal to, it, to, it to, to work stuff out. To work it's stuff easy. out. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 And you, and you do. But I, I you know, I, I, I'm a, a couple of minds. I mean, a lot of people write characters that aren't from their life and they just kind of put it up there because it, it might be fashionable to write about people from Czechoslovakia back in the day because they think it's interesting and they are going to count on the actors to help them fix it and I, I, I don't do that but a lot of people do Czechoslovakia <laughs> you know what I'm talking about yeah so you yeah, know right right so but yeah but yeah go into rehearsal and be mindful just try to do research you know as, as much as you think is necessary and be mindful about it you know, and open to like, hey, I don't know, this isn't, you know, I don't know, so I'm open to be, to, I'm teachable, I'm open to learning more, you know. Good question, though. Good question. Anybody else? Questions about your work, your creative process, that was what I was saying. Well, I, I have a disciplinary question. A I'm disciplinary a, question? Yeah, I'm a, a multi-genre writer. Right. Um, I write fiction, I write screenplays. Right. Um, there's always a story in my head, right? And this exercise was really interesting because I started to work on a screenplay that I've been kind of nursing an right. idea for, and then I found myself going back to work on a short story that right. needs some tweaking, right? So, like, where do you fall in that? Like, do you discipline yourself to sort of? sit down and finish one piece, or do you kind of go like wherever the mood takes you? Right. Like, is right. that? Uh, right. Yeah, you know, that, that, did everybody kind of hear June's question? Um, she, she, she does a lot of different kinds of writing, and, and am I correct in hearing, you said, so when I sat down right now, I started to work on a screenplay, and then I turned to? A short story. In 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you, I would say, yeah. I appreciate you asking a question, because I would say you have a problem. Yeah. 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 What, what, a yeah. disciplinary problem. <laughs> it is a focus. Yeah, it's a focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, because what happens is we start working on something, and then, hey, I feel a little, it's like dating. You know, I mean, yeah. it's nice to date like five people at once. <laughs> but 500, then you got a problem, right? right. I mean, right, okay, okay. You heard about the, the men who have like, I got six kids by 12 different women. Yeah. You know, and you think, wow, well, brother got a problem, right? right. So, so, so we narrow, it, narrow your focus, right? Uh -huh. Especially in a 20 minute exercise. Right, I didn't right. commit to one. I committed, exactly. I started on one and then exactly. I went to the, I did commit, commit to the second piece, but. Well, like, you committed to three things. You committed to being here, that's major. So you can commit to showing up, which is major, right? Which is great. That's the hardest thing to do. So you can already do the hardest thing. And then the second hardest thing is deciding to do something. You didn't just sit there and go, oh, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't make up my mind, okay? So you decided, and then you changed your mind. And what we want to look at is the changing your mind part of it. Because, because you've raised the question, it sounds like it is something that you can improve, you know, you can improve upon, right? So you need to, what's that saying, gird your loins? <laughs> okay, so you know there was a ship. What was his name? Ulysses. And the sirens were singing in the hills. And he had his men tie him to the mast, which is different from gird your loins, but it's kind of the same. <laughs> because he didn't want to go off course, right? So they tied him to the mast so that the ship could continue and say along. So you need to tie yourself to the mast, right? So there's all this shit that's flying around your head that you're actually entertaining. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, come on, come on, June, work on this for a minute. Come on, girl, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Or, oh, I don't know, I don't know, you get in too deep with that. There's all this sh crap that's floating around in your head. All these sirens that are, come here, come here, come here, come here. You just have to, what do you, You know this gesture. I mean, he could have done that. 
Ulysses. He could have just said, talk to the angel. But he said he had the men tied to the mask, which was, you know, cooler. It's so, it's so exciting, you know, ropes and shit, uh, you know. But you just ha you have to just... So, when you are writing something and you feel the voice saying, June, 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 it's time for you, you're not done with your screenplay yet, you're only on page four. You know that Mike, uh, what's his name, D'Onofrio, the actor? Vincent. Yeah. Right, he does that, you know it's a crime scene? Crime scene. Whoa, it's a crime scene, right? Okay, Vincent D'Onofrio. So, when your voice says, June, 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 come on, you're only on page four, but boy, you might have a great short story for you to start. You know that that is not the voice of inspiration trying to lead you to something great. You know it's the voice of fear trying to get you off track. Okay? And, and if it's like inspiration sort of inhabiting, or, or fear inhabiting the body of inspiration and you know making it speak in tongues to you, <laughs> right? <laughs> Lexus knows she's like, I've, I've seen that happen. You can just write it down really quick on a little notebook. Great idea for a short story, just write it down real quick. Okay, I'm, keep, I'm gonna keep going. Does that make sense? It's the voice of fear. Fear appears to us in different ways. Sometimes it's, hey, 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 work on a new project. You're not done with that one, but who cares? This is much better. No one's gonna want that one anyway. Right, okay? That's the voice of fear. That's kind of like where I am stuck in this place of trying to work from what what's gonna be able to sell. Right. <laughs> See, I can read your mind. But I'm a professional. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of course, yes. I can hear it. Yeah, that's why a lot of times that's why we might jump from one thing to the next. Right? Which is okay. I'll tell you what, nothing's going to sell if you don't finish it, right? I mean, I mean, sure, you can pitch a concept, but if you can't sit down and write it, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to, right? So you have to develop or develop more of the ability to stick with something through to when you can type the end. And then and only then are you allowed to go to the next step. All right? Or, and, you can do this. You can practice spending 20 minutes a day. If say, how much time do you spend a day writing? There's not, I'm lacking discipline right now. I, I, I don't. I, whenever the mood strikes me. And oh. I can't take it in jail. Right, right, okay. So, so what's your favorite time of day? I mean, the time when you feel like, yeah. I'm a night writer. You're a what? I'm a night writer. She's a night writer. You're a night owl kind of type, right? Okay, great. So about what time is that? Like 10 o'clock? Or mm -hmm. like you feel like, yeah, I'm really me. Okay, so how about from 10 to 11? We'll keep it simple. 10 to 11 o'clock, you're going to have for your writing time. And in that time, you get to spend 20 minutes on a three different projects. Yeah, see, you're smiling because see, this one doesn't have to be painful. It just has to. It just has to. Keep, it just has to be consistent. Twenty minutes on your screenplay, just whatever you want to do. Beep, 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 beep. And again, get yourself one of these. I'm sure you already have one of these. Can you tell the difference, everybody? You see the difference? And it's not like a flip phone clamshell, no, one of these. All it can do is count. Gateway crack. Wonderful. Okay, get yourself one of these, set it for 20 minutes, beep, beep, it goes off, then you get to switch. And work on your short story for 20 minutes. Beep, beep, beep. Then you can go back to your screenplay or stay on your short story or work on your novel or your poem or your song or whatever. Okay, but make sure you put in the time an hour a day from say 10 to 11. And if you don't, you're not in the mood, so what? Sit there and let this just count down the minutes. Okay, think of Ulysses. If he can do it, so can you. Okay? Your, your birthday's on blue tape. See? <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
Ah, you've come to the right place, dear. So, okay, see your birthday's on the 26th, this night, 16th, 16th of June. Amazing. Okay, so now you have to do it. Yes. Okay. Everything's so easy. Anybody else? Yes, what's your name? My name's Gethsemane. Gethsemane? Yes. Oh, like the garden. Precisely. Oh, I mean, but yeah. That's a beautiful name. Thank you. I always wow. say that my grandma went in. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Wow. So you have a song now. I have a song. It's from Jesus Christ Superstar. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so what's your question, Gethsemane? Um, two questions. Yes. How do you feel like what you're doing is enough? How do you, how do you, how do you feel like what you're doing is enough? I moved to New York from DC to dedicate myself to theater. Got a job as a theater teaching artist. Um, apply for grad schools, have drafts of everything, make my deadlines, and it still doesn't feel like it's enough. And the second question is, or part two, of that question is, um, what draft is the hardest for you? For for you. What draft is the roughest to get through? For you? For you. <laughs> okay, so so these are both really great questions. Did you hear her question? She's a little, get some of these, a little soft spoken. I'm going to paraphrase. Sure. So sure. she's moved here from DC, right? She uh, wants to pursue a uh, life in the arts, and she's moved here. She has drafts of everything. She meets her deadlines. She works really hard. She has a job as a teacher. Theater teaching artist. A theater teaching artist. So she's doing, sounds like everything right. Sounds like you're doing everything right. Um, but she still doesn't feel like it's enough. And the second question is which draft for her is enough? Which, which draft for her? Because it's about your work. So it's who, I mean, I mean, thank you for asking that question, but who the fuck cares what my problems are? Because it's about you today. So, okay. So is it a, is what I'm doing enough? Um, does it not feel like you're doing enough because you haven't received the recognition maybe that you're that you need right now? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm beginning to get recognition. I just got featured in the Washington Post for a story. I just it feels like it never feels like it's enough. Like I feel like I wake up and I work and I work harder. Why did I press news? Well, I could have gotten up ten minutes. Early. I skip yoga today. I know I need to do that to take care of myself. It's just, right, right, right. It never feels like it's enough. It right. Like I always be doing more. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, that is a, that's something, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something you need to start working on now. Because if you don't work on it now, then no matter what happens, no matter all the wonderful things that are coming to you in your life and your career, will never feel like enough. So it's like you have a hole inside that you need to you need to start now. You need to tell yourself, I don't know if you want to look in the mirror every day and say, I am enough. I'm doing it. I'm doing it really, really well. You need to replace that. A lot of times we have uh, what we call negative self-talk, you know, in our head. We have this stuff going around in our head that says you're not good enough, or your writing's not good enough, or you'll never make it, or whatever. We all have some shit revolving in our head on that record in our mind, right? That old LP, we've got that. And one of your things is, I'm not doing enough. And so you need to just start saying, when that comes up, that is the voice of bullshit. Like June's got something that says, hey, come on over here and try something new. I mean, that's, that's what your voice says. And your voice says, Gethsemane, you're not doing enough. That's the voice of bullshit. You need to recognize it as the voice of bullshit instead of the voice of truth. It's not the voice of truth that you should jump from one project to another one without ever having finished the thing you're working on. It's not true that you're not doing yoga. Yeah, sure, you should have gone to yoga today, but it's a recurring, mon your mantra should not be you're not doing enough. Your mantra is, you're doing really well. And I'm proud of myself. And do you have a do you have the practice of um, a lot of people do have a practice of writing gratitude lists? Does anybody has anybody ever heard of this gratitude list? At the end of the day, 
you write uh, down 10 things that you're thankful for? Do you do that? Okay, at the beginning of the day, do you do that? Okay, so try it at the beginning of the day. Like, I mean, do it twice. Book in your day with, wow, all the things that are going really well. And whenever that voice comes up, start replacing it with, wow, look at what's really going well. Look what I accomplished. Because you don't want to, you don't want to give that that negative bullshit voice too much, too much time. It's like, I mean, if you had a friend, are you guys friends? Are you friends with Shamar? Kind of. With yes. like friend, friend. But I mean, would you, if she, if you were Shamar's friend and you're talking to her, like, if you said, Hey, Shamar, how you doing, girl? You know, you're not doing enough. Would you guys be friends? <laughs> right, right, right. She wouldn't talk to your friend that way, right? So why are you talking to yourself like this? Right? So that's just bullshit, okay? And replace it with something true, okay? And that will help you, that will serve you better. And the second thing, which draft is hardest for you? Which draft is hardest for you? I mean, I'm really, I'm like, I'll like, have a problem with finishing and then I just sat down and made like, these are a hundred things I'm gonna get done in a year and I'm going to meet these deadlines. Okay. And I'm meet, meeting these deadlines um, and have drafts, but I feel like, okay, now the first draft is done, oh god, I'm afraid of the second, I'll finish the second, and oh god, I'm afraid of the third, like, what if I keep doing 10 drafts, and it gets nowhere, I think it's just, I think it's just weird. It's, yeah, so if you, if you're writing lots and lots of drafts, and you never feel like you're finished, it does feed into the, I'm not doing enough feeling, right, so hopefully working on the, I'm not doing enough feeling is going to take care of that, I'm writing too many drafts. Because then what you write is never good enough. I mean, I have problems. I have problems I, I, I don't have. I kind of like, hey, yo, it's okay. It's good enough. And I don't try to get it to be I, good. Uh, great is the enemy of good. Do we know that? Great is the enemy of good. And great is the enemy of good enough. It just has to be good enough. If you And also, we talk about lowering the bar. Try lowering the bar, Gethsemane. I lower the ball. I don't try to like, oh my god, I gotta write like Susan Mary Parks today. Fuck that. What? Please, I just wanna get something done. Lower the bar. And keep coming here. We have fun here when we hang out and talk about writing. So keep coming. Yeah, yeah, keep coming here, because it's like fun, you know. I mean, we're all very, very serious artists, you know. But you know, I mean you know what I'm saying? We don't like it. It takes a little too much effort. Okay. Okay, so come back. Please come back. Anybody else? We have some online. Oh, someone. So Crystal Adams wants, oh. she has some Crystal. Crystal. From New Jersey. Crystal. Isn't Crystal from New Jersey? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so okay. someone wants to read her first play. Oh, okay. Um, She has two endings, and she's not sure which one to go with. One is, um, she said romantic, but she corrected herself. One is more hopeful, and one is more raw, but her heart wants happy is the playwright interference. Um, yeah. So, w w w which one does she like best? Does it sound like she likes the romantic one, the hopeful one better? She like. I think it, it sounds like she, she wants the hopeful one, and, but, but the other one might be more true. I don't know. Go with the one you want, Crystal. Tr Crystal, go with the one you want. <laughs> and there's a big time delay on this. Whoa, yes, uh, funny. Yeah, go. I would say to Crystal, she should go with the ending that she likes better, and she can always change it back to the other one. You know what I mean? Go with the ending that she likes more, definitely. You know? And then she can always change it, but yeah. Yay, Crystal. Thanks for calling. There's a time delay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just watching myself on time delay. Anybody else have any? Oh, Alexis. Sis. Alexis. Okay. Okay. Um, my question, well, I have one that's like specifically and the other that's just like a personal article. <laughs> yes. Um, the first one is how do you deal with the fear that everybody's written what you already, or like what you made already? Right. Um, like, does original does originality matter? And the other one is, um, I kind of thought of it in the middle of the question about input, like, is it like a fear with impulse switching between? 
Um, so I kind of have this plan to like take off two years and then go back to school and like do more or like get a, like a conservatory degree. Um, but then now I kind of want to go back and I don't know if that's just me having the impulse because I went to an open house and saw like all these people excited. Oh. Or is that just like, huh. just sticking to the plan? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right, okay, so, so it's the conservatory grad school question is the second question. And the first question was originality. And you were going to say, something, does it matter? I mean, like, I mean, um, there's a theory that says, you know, everything's already been written. I'm so terrified. It's, it's already been written. So I would say that it's, like, you, you identified it. You said, it might be like June's question. So that might be your thing. Telling yourself, you know, I, I can't write this because it's already been written. Write it anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, I know the marketplace might say, I mean, it does say we'll only do like one thing by this kind of person. A Czechoslovakian <laughs> Every year, you know what I'm saying? And, and movies starring <laughs> movies starring people from Czechoslovakia don't perform in China. So um, it might discourage Czechoslovakian people from writing anything at all, which is the whole point of those statements. <laughs> right? They don't want people from Czechoslovakia. You're right behind me! Yes. Oh, you have a booth now? I know, because I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, next you're going to be a full body cast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's one of the heads of casting. Anyway, a uh, casting! <laughs>
to be exceptional. We are all exceptional. And exceptional, you know, you can go into a program and be exceptional. You know, you, you know, you know what I mean? So it doesn't, that doesn't matter, but we're all exceptional. So whatever decision you make is going to be the right one. Does that make it harder? Because <laughs> either way, you're going to be right, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right now, in this moment, you are where you were supposed to be right now. It's true. It's true. You are where you're supposed to be. It's true. Which is, which is, you know, right now, in this moment, we are exactly where we're supposed to be. Which is like, oh, what does that mean? I'm not supposed to have that big house in Malibu? Right now? Guess not. You know? Which is very interesting. It helps us stay focused. Discipline, allowing yourself to love the thing, the place where you are. Are you hearing? I, 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 I went back to after oh. 10 years for my MFA. Yeah. Um, but I, what, what I was saying to you in my head as you asked me that, I think that you, like, the program would be, you know, you get into the program, that, like, when I went to Sarah Lawrence, for example. But, like, when I was having conversations about whether or not I was going to go into all these debt to finish this massive series, um, so it's a couple of heads where we used to get accessible with me saying, well, you don't have to come right now. We've been accepted. So I want, that's kind of the advice that I would give to you is, you can put it off for a year, maybe two, even three. Like, talk to them, whatever, whichever the program is. Um, but also, just kind of, I went back on my MFA. I have, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I did film school undergrad, mm -hmm. and my feeling was that I didn't like. Oh, I got lost somewhere. Like I graduated film school, and I was scared to be an artist, so I found the money side of it, and I worked in the business, and I made good money, and I had that prestige of having my name on great films and great projects. And then I, like, my writing, my creativity always kind of was like, you sucker, like, how dare you abandon me? It was not me. And I've been recently, like, I, I had a screenplay option and now I'm being dropped. Mm -hmm. So my whole, I think, problem with discipline right now is that fear that Susan was talking about because I've been rejected. So now it's like I'm trying to create something that will be accepted, probably. You know what I mean? So, it, I think all this is to say that we need to remember why we do it. Like, if you're doing good now, why is that good now? Like, I almost want to write it for you. <laughs> well, good, to, yeah, good to me is, like, different. Like, good is, like, I have something I'm really passionate about, and I'm working on it, and, like, and trying to make it happen. Trying not with the intention to fail, but in the back of my head. I heard that on I Love You, Man. But, um, but like, there's something that I'm really passionate about and I want to work on it and keep working at it. And I have something to work towards. Like, that to me is really good. It's not like, like, if I see you and that's like super, like, when you, all the things you listed, I'm like, making, making, making deadlines? Like, that's, that's something I want to do. But, like, you know. Well, the skills that you can acquire in a conservatory program, you can't acquire outside of You know that. It just takes um, a different kind of effort. It's not all. It's not like a buffet on a cruise ship. You gotta kind of hustle out there, you know, like you're doing now. You're hustling out there. You're out there in the world hustling. And when you graduate from that cruise ship, you're gonna have to go back to hustling again. So, but hopefully at a higher level. Because you will have paid all that money. <laughs> but some programs are free or, or subsidized. I think Yale is free. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, no, no, yes, no. Yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no. Anybody have any early questions? What time? 6 08. You good? Okay. I still have a follow up. What's Crystal's follow-up? 
Her concern is that her main character is heavily flawed, and so would a hopeful ending be believable? I'd say do the ending that she likes the best. Again, do the ending that you like the best, Crystal, and then um, work it out later. You know, the flaws in your character. I mean, flaw, I mean, character flaws, like they're fucked up and stupid and weird. Do the ending that she likes the I would still say do the ending that she likes the best. Because what now you're asking me is to tell you to do the ending that you don't like. And I'm not going to tell you that. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm not going to tell you to submit something that you don't like. You know? Because maybe, Crystal, your ending, your happy ending, your hopeful ending, is the thing, the tractor beam, that's going to pull the character into the kind of alignment that the story actually needs. So maybe you're writing it, you know, from the back end, which is a totally okay way of writing. So. Are we doing, we're doing this next week, aren't we? I think we are. Great. Okay, well, thanks to you guys. Angie, Matt, and Yubica, and thanks you guys for coming. Yes.